part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine. You're listening to The Krypton Report. It's Superman Blue Tyler live on KR with you're waking up to KR with Tyler and James 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 here on the greatest podcast there is for DC Comics Krypton Radio Krypton Radio <laughs> you're waking up with Tyler and the James Tyler and the James <laughs> <laughs> Got your morning coffee and your bagel and donuts right here on KRRR. I don't yeah. even know what it's <laughs> right. Krypton Report Radio. Dum, dum, dum. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Krypton Report. I'm your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue. And as you've heard his lovely masculine voice, James, the Superman of Red. Hey. What is up, buddy? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, man. It's, it, it feels good to be back. Like We talked about <clears throat> just... Man, my new yeah, I know, Laura. We miss you, Tim. Never not give her credit. Yeah. Uh, between just life and everything that's going on, like it's just been crazy, man. Like, um, keeping up with everything. So. I mean, yeah, life, life for us and life for uh, everybody else. I mean, you know, they've got uh, uh, we got like so little news these days, and like just struggling yeah it's just i mean my new job just kind of worn me down to a uh the kids getting over there doing their play just kind of drained me like i mean it just a lot going on a lot going on and we're getting back in the swing of things and we got some news no. uh first some news with us no. we're changing up some of our patreon stuff that's right laura's like what yeah what's this news uh, what you talking about what? willis <laughs> what you talking about willis um Feast your eyes on what? Um, <laughs> so we are we we had shows going on our Patreon. We are retiring Brian's high in the car. We are going to be moving and doing our supernatural podcast twice a month, and we might be doing twice a month for Krypton Report for a while because we really want to build up some comics. We want to build up some things, and we miss doing supernatural. Um, so these are some things we are working on here. And with the requel podcast that I do will be expanded upon in the Patreon, but you'll also get it on the Press Play Podcast Network's Fanfare, our movie review podcast. So check that out. You'll be getting that there as well. Just some extra fun to just kind of get you in the mood for some good old podcast listening. So that's more some, shows. That's some, yeah. So that's that's you know our our Patreon's a dollar and we still are doing our movie commentaries. We hope to hear soon. We will be finishing up uh, all of the DCEU films. Mhm. And that'll be fun. Um uh, because we'll be able to the idea is with 2024, yes, we will do Aquaman. Um uh, just because of when Aquaman 2 releases. But once that is finished, we'll be just kind of, you know, fresh and, you know, really looking at DC and where it's been. So it's going to be a, a fun, fun time. Yeah, I look forward to some, some, you know, other DC movies um, from the past, talking about them, watching them, talking about them. And, and we're going uh, to be focusing on that in 2024. It's kind of that, but we're also going to be focusing on... Comic book movies that people don't really talk about. I don't want to give examples, but we are going to discuss um, some things. We will do a special called The Year 1997 <laughs> <laughs> and what comic book movies looked like then. The Year of Spawn. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> well, you know, we'll look at the 90s period. Um, so that means we'll talk about like the Phantom, the Shadow. Ones that people don't aren't always in the conversation of oh man the best uh, comic book film there is you know 
So we'll, we'll be looking at that kind of throughout 2024 and some other things. So that'll be a fun discussion to be part of. If you haven't heard over on the Patreon for Capes and Lunatics with Phil, we discussed 1999's Mystery Men. So that was that was fun. Mm, that would be a good one. So if everyone's like, what are you talking about? Well, that's kind of the point. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. There's a lot of obscure comic book movies out there that people haven't seen or, you know. Because <laughs> the 90s was the time of the indie comic. You really. Yeah. You had you had uh, Mystery Man. You had, um, just off the top of my head here, Men in Black. You had Ninja Turtles. Things that people don't think about, but oh yeah, those were comics. Yep, they started as comics. I mean, like you said, the Phantom, the Crow, the Crow, yeah. And with the Crow new one coming up, that's definitely something we're going to touch on. So look for that on the Patreon discussions. It'll be commentaries, but also just episodes and discussions as part of our Patreon fun of comic expansion. Now, on back to the DC news. In DC news, we have a premiere date for that holiday special. I put that in quotes. <laughs> the Merry Little Batman. And the holiday season joined Batman, Alfred, and young Damien in an epic adventure to save Christmas in Gotham City. And Merry Little Batman premiered exclusively on Prime Video December 8th. And we have a poster that looks like a Joker witch. <laughs> right. I, I'm, I mean, this is something that I read when they talked about it years ago. Back when they made that huge announcement with uh, My Adventures with Superman and everything. And I was really excited. You know, just a new holiday special to watch every year. That's DC. And it's Batman. Awesome. You know, like, I think that I now have a Thanksgiving special for My Adventures to watch every year for Thanksgiving. But then we saw the first animation picture and Alfred's face looked like a male genitalia. And it just, I was like, what is this? I mean, it's almost right there on par with that Aquaman show that they pretend didn't happen, that they disappeared off Max. Yeah, disappeared <laughs> off Max and is not showing anywhere. They was like, dang, we effed up. Um, and it's kind of a, I mean, they're just hoping, I guess, since it's Batman, that it'll sell more than that garbage Aquaman thing. I'm going to attempt to watch it. I'm not going to deny it. Like, I'll watch it with the kids because I use them as a barometer, you know, to see what works, what doesn't work. And if they're like, this is crap, Dad, I'll be like, all right, then that, that's what it is, you know. Um, But I'm going to give it a go because that's just how I am, you know, completionist. And I try. I tried with the Aquaman. I watched, like, the first 10 minutes of it, and I was like, I can't do this. So, you know, Yeah. So that's something to look forward to in your holidays, because it's always nice to have something added to just the holiday roster, you know? Um, yeah. Hopefully and, it'll be, hopefully it'll be, um, it'll surprise us. Uh, you know, I, we've, there, there have been some, some animated shows with like weird animation that have really uh, stood, stood up for, you know, quite a while in, just in, in that, in that cartoon realm, Disney, mm -hmm. Nickelodeon, things like that, um, where those cheap animations were actually able to, you know, really stand up because the show was better than the animation. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely correct. Um, so I, that'll probably be in our Christmas episode. So, um, I'm still fighting the battle of what to do about comics with my local comic shop. It has threw me off completely on my comics coverage because besides just being wrapped up in life and in my job, I haven't been a able shop to... to go to yeah. has really just messed me up. Um, so I apologize. We will get caught up on our comic discussions and reviews here shortly. Yeah, I uh, actually have to pick up uh, Superman 870. Um, or eight seventy eight fifty, <laughs> Superman number seven, eight number yeah, eight fifty large oversized action eight fifty. Yeah, it's no my, Superman. 
Is this? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yep. It's Superman number seven in this run right now, but it's Superman eight seventy overall or eight fifty. I don't want keep saying eight seventy because of number seven. <laughs> yeah, eight fifty yeah, they... overall. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, I was gonna say something. I totally blank. Yeah, I gotta go to the comic. I'm gonna go Saturday. There are comic shops doing a Halloween thing. So we're going to go up there Saturday, and I'm going to try to get caught up on my books. Yeah. Um, Wendy's is doing uh, basically kids' meals, DC kids' meals. I believe they're still doing it. So that was cool. Um, check those out. They have little, like, character figures in them. Some more I need to go get me some kids' meals. I know. <laughs> I went to McDonald's the other night to buy the kids the boo buckets, and they would piss me off because they all had the same bucket. At the McDonald's, they said, oh, we have two different ones. I said, okay, well, can I get, like, a different one? Because, you know, I'm ordering three. Because we were hoping to collect all four in one, you know, sitting. And the lady gave us all the same bucket. And I just wanted to throw it back in her face. <laughs> uh, so and we'll yeah, you'd be the next person we see on social media <laughs> throwing the, the, the kids, the bucket back in through the window at the work. <laughs> hmm. <coughs> We will be at Motor City Comic Con in on November eleventh from five. We are hosting a panel from at five PM. So come check that out. It's on the eighty five years of Superman. Check that out. It is in Michigan, near Detroit. So check that out. Also, we got two new photos of Lady Gaga. Um <laughs> uh, that's a reference to um Kelsey Grammer's pronunciation in Troll Hunter when he mentions her. Um, is it Gaga? Uh, of Harley Quinn in the upcoming Joker sequel. It's still a year away. A little under. One's her in the rain and she looks great. And one's a mugshot photo. And she looks like a Harley Quinn mugshot photo, really. <laughs> so I, I think we're going to get a really great performance. And um, we're going to be talking about that next year as well. Yeah, so, I mean, as a performance, I don't, I don't doubt that for sure. You know what I mean? Oh, as a yeah. Joker, Harley Quinn, I'm iffy on what we're gonna get. <laughs> yeah, um, just because you know, I'm, I wasn't sold on his Joker as Joker, and we've talked about that. And we'll talk about it more later. But here's some sad news. I guess Warner Brothers rejected an animated movie of Mortal Kombat versus DC. Hmm. <clears throat> seems like a uh, seems like a win win. You uh, know, I mean, well, Warner Brothers keeps putting out those uh, Mortal Kombat animated movies. I mean, they've got to be doing they've got to be doing okay in that, right? You know. And yeah, the DC I mean, Animated out. Universe movies have been coming out since 2007. So they put out the fourth an animated movie. And I didn't buy it. I want to watch it. Like It's not to rent at Redbox. And I'm it'll be streaming on Max on some time. And I'm definitely going to watch it. Um, I've enjoyed all f three of the... There's Scorpion. And then there's the one, like, Defenders or something. It has Luke Kang on the cover. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Snowblind. And then the new one is uh, Cage Match. Yeah. I think the only one I haven't seen is Snowblind. So, have you watched Cage Match? No. No. I, so, I mean, uh, up till. So, oh, I gotcha, saw the gotcha. first two. I haven't seen Snowblind yet. Snow and Blind I haven't. Is good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do like anywhere. them. They're pretty, they're pretty interesting. It's in my movies anywhere. You can check it out. Ooh, okay. Um, <clears throat> I haven't been in there in a while. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. What other news I got? Um, I have a lot. It's just trying to compartmentalize everything. This this is an interesting little announcement. So New York Comic Con happened, and I'm trying to make sure I got as much of the news as possible. I probably missed some things, so I apologize if I did. But DC is officially done with Jeff Johns. Like, he... So Jeff Johns moved into this new creator own thing um called ghost machine with uh brian hitch jason fabok peter tomasi francis manipal gary frank 
uh, Brad Metzer, and more. And it just kind of feels like Image 2.0. Yeah. But it feels like, it really feels like that wave of DC that happened that we all kind of just like refell in love with is leaving. Like Fabok hasn't done some DC work in a while. And no matter what you think of Three Jokers, his art is amazing. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I mean, I'm I'm curious because we've all said that Jeff Johns is a great writer, but I've never written anything that Jeff Johns has done that's not DC based. Like, has he ever written anything outside of DC? I know he's written for um for image. I know he's he's got he's at least had a um a book or more over there with image but other than that i mean i've never read anything outside of his dc work um and i mean we talked about this recently it's like like he's he's been a big proponent of how the dc universe has been for the last 20 years um you know bringing back uh Green Lantern, expanding that corner of the universe, bringing back Barry Allen, Flashpoint, New 52, Rebirth. There's been, you know, he's written so many things. Um, What, Infinite Crisis? Some people, uh, Mm -hmm. some people argue maybe their favorite crisis event. Um, So, like, yeah, he's done, he's done a hell of a lot for DC, and he's really, um, uh, he's really, uh, made a name for himself there. He, he really helped kind of help formulate that universe, uh, as we kind of know it now. Um, and, but then in the last, you know, handful of years, I mean, obviously with the, the, um, uh, the complications and the controversy, um, behind the scenes for live action, um, mostly justice league, uh, but uh, other things as well. But he's he's been a controversial just person to to bring up. But then you look at some of his books and everything, and it's all just it's all just a mystery with loose threads hanging for for other people to finish out a story. Like that's where he's like you know, it's where he's been lately. Is like ideas, ideas, ideas without answers. Yeah, I mean, it really started, I think, as he took on less of the comic book role and more of the film side, you know, into Rebirth. We all know about how long it took for him to do Doomsday Clock, how the three Jokers thing got kind of changed and pushed to the side. Um, so it, it, it'll be interesting. It'll, it'll be really interesting. Um, <clears throat> so Jason Aaron is taking over Action Comics for a three-issue arc, 1061 through 1063 for Bizarro. Hmm. Will Tyler be reading? That's the question. Uh, It depends on the... um, I'm sure it depends on how it's written, because if it's written entirely in Bizarro, Tyler will be skipping that one. (laughs) I'll be like, and to James on this segment of the podcast today. Um, so Philip Kennedy Johnson is leaving Action Comics. I I didn't see when his last book will be, but he is leaving Action Comics. Uh, I did see that, and that is a little sad. Um, because he's not doing Superman now either. Mm-hmm. Um, he said he's not done with Superman though. So, see where that goes. What does it mean, Philip? Yeah. What does it mean? <laughs> um, so that that is exciting. The DC, um, so just the DC Elseworlds brand is really coming back. Um, and I, I, I feel like in a way, like maybe Mark Wade had a hand in this, being back and being doing a lot of prominent DC books right now. Um. And they are bringing back a sequel to Gas- Gotham by Gaslight, which will be a Victorian era Justice League. And wasn't it um, the, the Days of Krypton or something like that? 
Uh, I think so. Yeah, it was supposed to like introduce Superman into that that time. <laughs> like I said, there is stuff I've missed, people. So don't 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 hate. Okay. There's hey, as long as I can on. plug in a little bit of information. Let's say we've shared uh, most of the same stuff. So <laughs> if yeah. I remember a little something, you don't. Then... Let's see. We have more here. Um, we got our first look at the cover of. Superman 78, The Metal Curtain. And it looks cool. Um, the animation, or the animation, the the art looks very animated. Um, it's not the same person doing the art, but the same writer. It'll be a six-issue miniseries again. Like I said, we will review that, but I will wait. I will purchase it and trade, and then we'll review it. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we'll just do it all as a one-time, one-shot story. Well, we're going to be moving to that format on certain things. Yeah. Um, well, my, my, um, my year, my annual, uh, subscription just went through on my, uh, on my DC universe ultra, uh, infinite ultra. So, you know, they got another year of comics coming and, and, uh, with that coming out, I will certainly read the entire, um, the entire run on DC Universe, and then yeah, grab that trade when it comes out. Man, that's our plan, everybody. That's our plan. But yeah, the way it's structured, I'm sure it'll be better to talk about the that Superman seventy eight sequel in a uh, in a trade format. You know, talk the mm-hmm. whole story that way. Yeah, because it's going to be written for that six issues. It's not going to be written for per issue. Let's see other news that's made us very excited. We've announced the return of Elseworlds at New York Comic Con, and part of that will be Dark Knights of Steel two. (laughs) Yeah, officially from Tom Taylor's Twitter. Yeah, call it Twitter. I don't care. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, yeah, Dark Knights of Steel two, and it's going to focus, or at least, uh, I mean, I don't know if that's going to be the primary focus of the story, Um, but. Deathstroke is going to be a Viking. Yeah, that sounds so, awesome. Yeah, so we're going to see some more, uh, some different kingdoms outside of just um, the Kingdom of Storms and the uh, the Wayne L Kingdom. Um, this excites me here. Okay, and this says rumor. So take it with a grain of salt, people. Scott Snyder is returning to DC to develop DC's own Ultimate Universe. I mean, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited I'm, for that. I like Scott Snyder. You know, I I feel like in a way Scott Snyder's been doing that in his whole career. Like, hey, this is my <laughs> this is my DC world over here, but I have it tied to everything. But yeah, I'm like. I'm in my own pocket universe over here. <laughs> right. I mean, it would be really interesting to see him tackle more characters, um, uh, uh, more characters in the DC universe, especially in kind of an Ultimates way. Um, I really did like the Ultimates. Uh, it was it was a really uh, compelling, different, modern um, take, especially on the um, the Avengers. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, I've read some of the X-Men, but I haven't read enough of it, so I can't I mean, really comment. Ultimate Spider-Man was great. I enjoyed Ultimate Fantastic Four. Um, I don't really remember much of Ultimate X-Men. And, like, yeah, the Aven- that was the, the Avengers stuff is kind of what the start of for the MCU was. Yeah, yeah. And like we said before was, <clears throat> had the New 52 kind of just been this complete reboot kind of like the ultimate this side universe maybe it had had done better so i'm kind of curious of what their plan and thoughts is for that yeah um but no i'm i'm definitely excited to see that you know um it is it, for comic book fans it's always good to give a jumping on point and you know starting another ultimates universe that's kind of what the ultimate was over at marvel was this jumping on point that you could get in and start reading it was it was different it was modern it was fresh and and you know you could really uh uh jump in without having to be 
weighed down by 85 years of history. Yep. So, I mean, that might be that might be something uh, something to try for, especially since they've they're bringing back the Elseworlds brand. Um, I mean, it's kind of like you can kind of have the Elseworlds brand. I don't see why you couldn't have the Elseworlds brand in a ongoing universe like that instead of just one-off stories here or there. Um, I agree. I mean, and that's why it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. I think Elseworlds can be a powerful thing. Alora agrees with us. Yeah, I think she. I think she's interested in that idea. <laughs> so I feel bad that yesterday was Wonder Woman Day, and I totally forgot. I've been that busy that ten twenty one is supposed to be Wonder Woman Day, and I totally forgot, and I feel horrible. So I made a note in my recurring note in my calendar to celebrate next year. But McFarlane released its look at its upcoming Wonder Woman figure, and it looks pretty dope. Yeah, it looks like it's from that uh, Tom King run that's just beginning for Wonder yeah. Woman, um, which actually I think is my next issue up on my queue in my in um, the app. Number one just dropped. Yeah, it was. It, I read it. It was. It was interesting. Um, it was. I have thoughts, and it deals with my thing of I think Wonder Woman's a very difficult character to write. Well, you know what? What's really cool, considering that yesterday was Wonder Woman Day. Yesterday was also Alora's second birthday. She turned two yesterday. Her birthday yeah, is on Wonder Woman Day. Yeah. Um. So we'll have to. We will definitely. I uh, definitely have to lean into that moving forward. <laughs> guess what well, she's getting next year. Yep. Guess what she's getting next year. <laughs> I don't care if she wants puppy dog pals for her birthday party. Wonder Woman. <laughs> uh, be like, but but but, Dad, I'm I'm thirty. Take it, Wonder take, Woman. Take the bracelets. <laughs> take the bracelets. Oh man, that's awesome. And let's see. I think this is so. Speaking of McFarlane, November 8th, they're launching the Batman and Robin Build-A-Figure Wave, which I'm excited for. With uh, four figures, it's Batman, Robin, Batgirl, Poison Ivy, and Mr. Freeze is the Build-A-Figure. And I'm excited because like, I have my own shelf that's like Batman, and I've been like getting the McFarlane live-action versions of different villains, and so far I haven't had any duplicates. You? So it's yeah. gonna be kinda cause it's kinda nice to just add another layer of movie um Batman villains. Yeah. Um actually that line does seem kind of interesting. I mean, I want an Alicia Silverstone Batgirl. I want that Nightwing Robin <laughs> where he was <laughs> red Robin. Nightwing before he was red Nightwing in the new fifty two. And Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh uh Mr. Freeze. They need to come out with a Jeep Swanson Bane, though. Yeah, they do. Maybe that'll be their gold. Their gold, uh... Yeah. Label figure. Well, it also blows... I mean, just the same thought process. It blows my mind they didn't do a In Hathaway Catwoman for the Dark Knight trilogy. Yeah. So... It, it kind of... Whoa. Now, okay, so this last little bit of news here is... I got a couple more things. So uh, Matthew Vaughn has a new movie director, Matthew Vaughn coming up and he was that talking and he went back to like a pitch that him and Mark Millar had for a Superman trilogy. Uh, It was going to be a Superman trilogy with Lex, Zod, Brainiac and the villains. And our biggest idea was Krypton doesn't blow up. It eventually does. And Superman has grown up and suddenly there's a mass exodus. And I was like, that just, yeah. I'm like, man, that that just it goes back to that JJ Abrams thing. Like, no. Part of the core of Superman's story is the planet has to blow up and that's why he leaves. Yeah. So, I'm guessing that that pitch was heard by Warner Brothers people and then when they were doing the Man of Steel pitch afterwards and they were like, "Well, how's he supposed to go back to Krypton?" It's because they don't give a shit. They didn't know that it's blown up and that it needs to blow up. Why well, otherwise why else are you sending him off planet? 
Yeah. Like unless you're doing like this planetary civil war and right. Jorel and Laura are just being yeah. like the greedy people and they're sending their their child away from the planet so that they're not involved in this, you know, surrounded by this war. Not doing it for anybody else, only their child. It sounds horrible. It sounds stupid. <laughs> just like the JJ just like the JJ Abrams pitch. And then the last piece of news that we have, sadly, is we lost a Lois Lane. Phyllis Coates at ninety six has passed away. Phyllis Coates was in an episode of Lois and Clark, where she played Lois Lane's mom. Phyllis's real name was Gypsy. Oh wow. I learned that. I did not know I that. Learned, I learned that. Um you can see Phyllis as the amazing Lois Lane. I used to undervalue her and I apologize because I've said she's my least favorite. No, she is great. Um Superman versus the Mole Man. Or, I mean sorry, Superman and the Mole Man. And the first season of the Adventures of Superman is where you can find Phyllis's performance. Nice. Um, she was the last person of that cast to be alive. So now we have completely lost um, a part of Superman history mm. and legacy. So Phyllis, rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, and now we're going to take a break and you'll hear some cool things. Uh, so here we go. What's up, everybody? Chase Smith here from the Chase Smith Podcast and Cavs on the Break NBA Podcast. And I'm JD, host of the Hyman Podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. And we are super excited to bring you a brand new show starting next Tuesday, the Fanfare Podcast. The Fanfare Podcast is all about your favorite movies and our favorite movies and the best moments in cinema. To help guide our discussion, each episode will feature one classic. And we will grade this movie using a report card-like scale A through F. We're going to be grading categories like acting, directing, cinematography, the score, and even the movie poster itself. And we're not featuring a movie report card. We'll be sharing our movie rankings, franchise deep dives, actor and director interviews, and everything in between. Movies have been a major part of our lives, and we cannot wait to share our thoughts with you. Our premiere episode will drop Tuesday, June 27th, and JD and I will be reviewing Raiders of the Lost Ark in preparation of the release of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny on June 30th, the fifth installment of the franchise. Join us on the Fanfare Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. Here at Krypton Report, we believe in the power of podcasting, the power of speaking your voice and speaking something that comes from you. So here's a couple of podcasts you can check out with people sharing their voice. I am Brian Peters, the creator and host of Gravely Amusing. For the past 30 years, I've studied the history of gods and monsters in pop culture and our world. As a student of theology and history, I've tried to understand evil and its impact on us. As a writer, I've tried to share this knowledge. As a comedian, I've tried to make people laugh as I do it. But as a man-child, I'm still that scared seven-year-old boy. Join me as I share the history of horror and sci-fi, discuss classic and modern pop culture, and share a creepy story or two. This podcast may scare you, it may horrify you, or it may leave you gravely amused. Listen to Gravely Amusing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and wherever podcasts are found. Follow us on Twitter at Gravely underscore Amusing or on TikTok at Gravely Amusing. Hi, I'm Taria Maynard, and this is my co-host, Jania Patrick. We're a couple of sisters in Central Ohio who created a podcast. Our podcast is called The Confessing Heretics. The basic premise of the podcast right now, as we see it, is we're going to talk to you guys about um, our stories in religion, would you say? Mm -hmm. um, this podcast is about sharing our truths, our religious traumas, and our histories. 
We'd love for you to join us on our journeys as we talk about our pasts and discover more about ourselves along the way. We will be featured on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Just look for The Confessing Heretics. We have a $1 Patreon. Yes, I know everyone asks for money, but our $1 Patreon each month gets you commentary tracks for releasing movies, DC movies. It gets you my requel series where I pitch ideas about movie sequels, prequels, or whatever. It also gets special bonus episodes of whatever else some of the friends of the network chime in and drop. So check that out for $1 a month. That's all we ask. Keep it cheap, keep it simple, and help us keep going. Check out the link in the show notes or Patreon Krypton Report. Follow the link in the link tree or in the show notes below, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, Keep listening to the Krypton Report. And we're back. Ooh, back to you. Tyler and the Gene. <laughs> AR. I don't know why I'm like in this I was video. Gonna, I was, yeah, just, I was going to say we're going to have to come up with some kind of radio introduction. Like like I got a, a station around here and they, it's Dave and Chuck the Freak in the morning. So <laughs> I'm just like, it's Tyler and the Japes because it makes no sense. You're like, yeah. you make like some, like I always think about, uh, Mr. Pig and Mr. Scream or whatever from Wayne's World 2. Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but whatever. It's weird. Okay. So we've started our quest into Justice League action. It was part of our October initiative. And here we are like at the end of the month. We only put out like two episodes because we put out some Patreon. We do have me and Solomon checking out the Batman versus Dracula. And what's labeled like it's weird. We talked about this. Um, I'm going by the IMDb post and how it is kind of uh, on IMDb. It's broken up, but on my <coughs> stuff, it's different. So just have to follow along best you can. People look for titles depending on where you're streaming because technically the first episode is four episodes and that's how they released it. But then some uh, things show it as the individual four. So mm. the next episode is follow that space cab, which some places is episode two. But Superman and Hawkman receive help, the help of an honorable space cab driver as they try to protect Mr. Mind from being captured by Lobo. All right. James's man, Lobo. <laughs> Lobo. La Hobo. <laughs> this one is cool because, like, it's just like we talked about before. Like, it's cool because it's random. And, like, it, it doesn't have, like, exact connective, connect tissue but it, it's just nice because it is you never know what the episode is going to be like I was like oh Lobo yeah and, and this episode technically dropped January 21st 2017 with the space cabbie being voiced by Pat Oswald Yeah, that was the surprising one. <laughs> you know that voice anywhere. Oh, yeah. Um, One of my favorite parts in this episode is that Superman does the crushing the coal to make the diamond thing to pay the cabbie. Because, like, his cab gets tore up and Hawkman and him are battling and they're trying to protect Mr. Mind. And so he's like, money? And they're like, uh, uh. And Superman's like, yeah, hold on. <laughs> yeah. <Whoa. Ta> <laughs> <laughs> Alora trip. She's all good. Good, good. <laughs> um Something her Wonder Woman powers. Yeah. Uh no, it's it's pretty you know, it's a it's a fun episode. It's actually an episode I've seen um multiple times. Um it not just not particularly like like seeking it out, but anytime you start it, it's being that second episode you see it. Yeah. Um. I'll, I'll tell you the one that I've seen the most when we get there because Solomon loved it. Was, I was going to say, what is it? The video game one? Dang it, James! <laughs> I like that one too. <laughs> um. Well, I look forward to getting to that one. Yeah, no, this, this episode's pretty good. Um, you know, I like Lobo, like, and it's funny how Lobo is, 
he's this bounty hunter, but he's like, all I need is this. You can have the rest. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> um, like that's, that's actually kind of something I can see why they play up in the cartoon, kind of making him seem a little more, um, a little more like, like, I don't want to say dumb, but, um, kind of like, yeah, more like just a, a drinking dumb kind of bounty hunter guy. Um, because you know Lobo uses a lot of brute force and everything, but um, he's the best bounty hunter there is. So that's something that that would um, that I think he would know. You know that he would mm-hmm. have to bring back part of Mister Mind, not just not just some DNA to prove that he was squashed. Yep. Because he recovers, he regenerates. It's like when you cut a worm in half, now you got two. Yeah. It is true. But yeah, Lobo, he always cracks me up. Yeah. Um, you know, this this uh this episode really gives you the uh Justice League action portion. Like like it's action from the get go. From the time Superman smashes into that cab until until the end. Oh yeah, you know Superman, Hawkman versus Lobo, and and another bounty hunter. I mean, it's it's intense. So, yeah, I like this one. Like it. Yeah, it's a good episode. Um, it's definitely in a childish realm, you know, just the way oh. Mister Mind is like, ha. <laughs> I mean, it's, especially it's when he regenerates mind. at the end. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do we expect? Um. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know very much about Mister Mind. I know he is like this primordial creature, and and he's like immortal and has lasted like forever. Um, but I really don't know what he can do and what he's about. Like, I was looking it's, forward it's to maybe is. seeing that in the films, but. You know, we're farther away from that now than we ever were. It's one of those things, like, it's... It's been retconned and changed because... The whole Shazam universe keeps getting, like, retweaked by every writer to make things make more sense of how magic works and what exactly it is. And the magic lands. So he gets convoluted. But Mr. Mind's super smart. Yeah. Yeah, that much I got. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Moving on. The next episode was was one that I I thought was cool because it uh was the nuclear family. And this says it was aired January twenty eighth, twenty seventeen. Firestorm's family values the heat is on when the Justice League enlists the help of Firestorm. Taking a trip where it all began, Firestorm encounters a not so all American family. And this is kind of cool because this is like. You know, the nuclear family, a set of villains that we would later see in Titans um, done, you know, differently in things. But um, I just, this, he is home. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it's, you know, this episode is basically focusing on these like cybernetic nuclear fallout shelter surviving machines that are think they're a family and it's basically about firestorm you know we see uh the martin stein inside his brain and everything and the kid's got his little davy crockett hat and it was just kind of neat because it's just you know superman and wonder woman make an appearance at the end batman makes an appearance at the beginning and the end but it's just kind of neat because uh yeah holy cow this is ironic. Just this just in as we're recording, we got an alert with McFarlane's Lobo. Dang, James, you checking that out? Man? Yeah, the the Lobo figure. It's a gold label, uh, Amazon exclusive, and it's Lobo and his space hog. I mean, that's that's just kind of weird as we just talked about Lobo in this previous episode of Justice League Action. Um yeah, I, I, I like, want to see that because I've been wanting to get the old Lobo figure, um, 
but now I gotta get the Space Hog one too. <laughs> I'm just like, um, I thought it was super topical. We just finished talking about it, and like, whoa, it's like, right there. <laughs> McFarlane heard us in the universe and was like, hey, hey, guys, <laughs> make it happen. So, all right, yeah, nuclear family, great fun episode. He is on. <laughs> uh, with our good friend Firestorm, which I think Firestorm is a character that gets regulated often and undervalued because so often does he just become like the Human Torch, but he's so much more. And I think that is a if you have not read Doomsday Clock, it is something in Doomsday Clock that is extremely prominent and part of an, a very strong emotional section. So. Highly recommend Doomsday Clock. Yeah. Speaking of our about... Jeff Johns earlier. <laughs> yeah, I know. And um, I mean, we talked about this, that next year at some point we'll be doing a deep, well, I don't want to say a deep dive, but we will be discussing um, Watchmen and all of its kind of stuff as we're supposed to be getting that Watchmen animated film. Right. Um, Should be good. I don't think we've actually ever sat down and watched uh, Zack Snyder's Watchmen. We haven't. We kept so. trying to find like a time. So like we're gonna do that as a as part of our <clears throat> DC films, you know, other DC films uh next year. And yeah. So Watchmen will be something to look forward to next year. Um I do wanna make one more um kind of sad announcement. And yeah, or uh, it's just it's been as of this weekend it's been a year since Henry Cavill's appearance in Black Adam. And it's just interesting. It's been a year and how that's kind of set with us. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think we've been pretty clear on our, uh, our feelings on that whole thing. I mean, we were it's, really excited to have him back only to have it, the rugs pulled yanked out from underneath us. And I understand like where James Gunn comes from with, uh, I get it. You know, I, I get it um, because you're going to try to clean up your stuff. I get it. But you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. So, all right. Now, have you read Steelworks number four? I have. Yes. You want to take us into that? We'll discuss that and then we'll discuss another book and we moving on. Uh, yes. Let me. Let me get that one. I got it here somewhere. Oh, no. I had actually read it on the app, but I do have the book right here. All right. So Steelworks, number four. Um, we pick up where we last left off, um, where Lana Lang is getting her Superwoman red powers coming back. Um, and, uh, John is able to, Steel is able to kind of take her down. Um, well, not take her down. She's not a particularly a threat except for like the overcharge, um, which is something about the, what this episode is about. Um, the reason why Connor had, um, uh, Connor had the, uh, the, the massive heat vision, um, blowout that he had. And why um, Natasha uh, had some problems with her suit. And why um, in the last issue, I believe it was the last issue, where we got some, um, uh, the talk of, of the the metal alloy, like, being within her. Like, being part of her now, in some respect. Um, I mean, they haven't expanded upon that or anything, but that's where we are. Um, he's got, uh, Steelworks locked down, um, doing running tests on Lana and we have Silver Mist, uh, sprint in through the building, um, because he can move and run through objects. He can phase through objects while he's moving. Um, so like, it's interesting too, cause he, like, I wonder if, I wonder if things like thick vault doors, would like slow him down, like slow down his, his phasing particles or whatever, 
like if he's if he runs through it, like if he could get stuck. That's a very interesting concept, just because he's he's uh, like run, run, you know, he's like run faster, run harder, you know what I mean? And uh, higher, yeah. Man. I'm not gonna let you poison me, <laughs> right? Um. So uh, gets that they're amazing. <laughs> he gets through. Um, he gets through the vault and he gets the, um, the zero, the zero point energy reactor that he's looking for. Um, but as the alarms go off, they go down, John goes down to the vault, you know, John's intelligent. He knows that he can't, he can't exit the vault with, um, he can't exit the vault with the reactor in hand. Um, he would run through and the vault and the, the reactor would stay put. Um, so it appears he sets it up for, uh, to be destroyed, to blow up and he throws it out to get destroyed as he, uh, runs and makes his escape uh, out of steelworks. Um, but John hid, uh, John hid the real zero point, uh, reactor, a zero point reactor in a family photos vault hiding in plain sight. So like a little safety deposit box. So it wasn't out in the open. It was just a decoy. Um, but, uh, hey. or maybe I have that backwards because he thinks, cause sitting out there with her, she should, he has it in his hand and within proximity of it, she should be, she should be electricity. She should be, you know, charging up her powers coming out and everything. I always find the red, like the idea of like Lana Lang, Superwoman fascinating. Yeah. I wonder if they would, I wonder if it would ever, if they're going to ever do the Superwoman red and blue again, if, if Lois is going to charge up too, you know what I mean? Like if she got in proximity of this, because it's, it's the gen, um, the re the thing that created this was the, uh, Genesis, uh, yeah. from War World, um, what they, what they were fighting for back when, um, Atlantis had it and it created a giant kaiju monster from the Genesis energy. Um, but, uh, uh, Walker, he has, a, a team, uh, infiltrated to go in and clean up. And he's able to, um, you know, sneak people in and and get the things that he needs. And he's got it. He he's got the zero point um, energy reactor. This is now the fun begins. Next mech madness. Oh joy! Yeah, be interesting. You know, um, mm -hmm. the first few issues I think of Steelworks were um, heavy dialogue. You know, lots of lots of world building, lots of setting up what John is trying to do. Um, but I think it really has rolled into into a good story so far in four issues now. All right. All right. So. OK. Here we go. It is time now to discuss a book that we have read that we've been trying to talk about. <laughs> but we're just going to kind of do an over discussion of it. Um, let me pull up my notes. Just so I remember what my notes are. Lex Luthor, Man of Steel. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Lex Luthor, Man of Steel is a five issue monthly American comic book limited series written by Brian Azzarello and illustrated by the great. Libra Mayho, which features Superman's nemesis Lex Luthor as the protagonist. The story explores Luthor's motivations behind being a constant foe of the Man of Steel inside a city that has largely embraced him. Luthor views Superman as a demigod who looks down on humanity and believes that in order to save the human race from extraterrestrial threats, Superman must be stopped. Now, what's interesting is the book was originally called Lex Luthor, Man of Steel. And was released uh, publication date December twenty eighth two thousand five. It was then Luthor, Lex um, 
number four, 2015. Okay, that's when I first read it. Was in that uh, when it was just Luthor. Then the version that I have that you lovely man got me was Luther, the 10th anniversary edition. Um, when it was now printed under the black label DC, which was July of 2019. Yes. We, we have the same trade, the Luther black label book, which is funny because um, it's the Luther 10th anniversary edition, but it's like more than 10 years, like 2015 <laughs> when it became Luther was the 10th year, but it's the same version just now different cover under the black label moniker. Yeah, just how uh, Joker came out, on how they re-released Joker yeah, by Azarello and Lee Bermejo. I don't know if I have it under that cover or not. That know. That is the cover I have my Joker under. I think I do. I think I do have it under that one. Because I, I was just like buying trades up and I didn't realize it at the time because I was just recollecting. But um, this... You know, I could say and read with this huge plot synopsis, but just what did you think about this book in general? Like your thoughts? Um, it's a pretty. Hold on. Yeah, you're fine. Meow, meow. All right, we're good. Um, yeah, it's it's a very interesting book. Um, you know, you you in the synopsis there. Um, because it's from Luther's point of view, you know, he's considered like the protagonist of the story Mm -hmm. and the way that Superman is drawn. He very, he looks very much antagonistic to Luther. His eyes are always, uh, red, you know, um, the scene where, uh, Batman intercepts the, uh, kryptonite and it seems like Superman is here to, here to fight him now because of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the things that, uh, the things that Luther does in this book, um, you know, uh, the, the way he's, uh, threatening the scientists, the way he's got people, um, uh, holding others up. Like they were in a car accident. He's got them. Uh, he's got his people holding them there at gunpoint to the head. Um, he, he, clones this woman creates uh hope yeah i was gonna ask you your thoughts on hope yeah he creates this character of hope which is basically a woman superman analog um of his own choosing of his own design and he, like he's physically attracted to her he ends up having sex with her and then sends her off to her death that sounds about right. Yeah, like he he does. He sleeps with her and then sends her off to her death. She's she goes and and um uh does he uh he does something uh he does something to her like like sets her off like mm-hmm. a self destruct. So like. Even though, we, like we say that Luther's a protagonist in this book, he's still just evil, you know? Yeah. He literally mm-hmm. creates this being, like, has this seemingly romantic relationship with her, at least him, at least uh, uh, on her side, you can tell from her dialogue, but then with his, then with him, it's purely, like, lustful, and and then he sends her off to fight Superman, and sets her for self-destruct and Superman has to be the one to like save, save the day. Not, not necessarily like save her cause he can't do that, but you know, stop her from, uh, destroying too much. Cause the explosion takes out a tower Yeah, it's um, it's sad. I mean, it really, really is. And and from his, I mean, still from Luther's point of view in the book, he's like, he's still like trying to be the good guy, you know, even though he's doing this horrible stuff. Yeah. 
he justifies everything he does. Exactly. It's it's like that story. It's like from um, All Star as well. You know, all the good I could have done for the world if it weren't for you. It's like, well, you know, you have you've had plenty of chances and opportunity to do good for the world, and you you still don't. You're still only focused on your own you know your own megalomaniacal uh, ways. It's crazy, and it is, you know. Um, it's a very good book. It's a it's a mm-hmm. very good read, and you know, I mean, he's one of our favorite artists. Uh, so the art is phenomenal the whole way. It's it's nice because he he doesn't often do a full book. You know, he it seems like more recently Bermejo has done a lot of covers you know, alternate covers. There's the Superman uh, uh, number seven has a cover that I have to go track down that I'm mad about because my comic book shop closed before I got it. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just frustrating because it's just one of those things like, Oh, I love his artwork. Like, you know, Batman Noel is a every year a read mm-hmm. for us as a family at Christmas time. Um, his, we'll, we'll get there probably eventually one day, but like his Batman Damned is interesting because it really feels like, I think if you start with Noel and then you read, I don't know if it'd be Noel into this into Luther, then to Joker, then into Damned. And then maybe Dear Detective. or, But it, there's definitely like a through line of a, a continual story of his Batman. Yeah. Because Bermejo has his own Batman. And there's definitely from Joker into Damned. So For sure. Definitely that one. <laughs> But this one just, you know, he the way he draws Superman in it is like from Lex Luthor's point of view. So Lex is definitely always big and or Superman's always looks scarier and more menacing and more villainous because that's the way Luthor decides to show him. Yeah. Yeah, in Luthor's mind, Superman's the bad guy holding him and the rest of the world back from being better. That is Luther, and I want to thank James and Alora for being here on this episode of KRRR Radio. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to workshop that. <laughs> You're like, dude, just chill. Okay. <laughs> um, but yes, so that is the episode for today. I hope you all enjoyed. We are back. We are working. Life is... Busy and complicated, but we do our best. So remember. Look up in the sky. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite. Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information.